So you got yourself a crucible. And now, you got yourself a pair of tongs. But you realize to yourself, how am I going to melt the metal? I mean, you could put it on the stove. It's not melting. It's not melting. <laughs> but I got a better idea. You need to get yourself one of these. A metal melting machine. Let's get started. The main body of the furnace will be a 31 gallon trash can. I chose a trash can because they are really cheap and you probably already have one laying around getting rusty. So this is how our furnace will be planned out. We will have an inner clay and sand pot as a lining. And on the outside between the clay and trash can will be our vermiculite acting as insulation as well as being protected by the clay. We will then add a hole to the bottom of the furnace for air if you are going to use charcoal or for propane if you're going to use gas. The materials in my furnace lining are sand and clay. These are pretty cheap and readily available materials to get. A 50 pound bag of clay at my nearest clay shop costs $9 and can make multiple linings. Clay by itself would crack if you were just to use it on its own. We add sand to the clay to stop it from cracking. The insulation I decided to go with was vermiculite. Vermiculite is a great insulating material that can withstand temperatures above 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. You can get giant bags of vermiculite for about $30 to $40 and it should last you forever. I just bought my vermiculite from the garden section at my local hardware store even though it was a bit more expensive to do so. It was just easier. Now the clay you should use must be a stonework clay, as opposed to other clay like earthenware. Pottery clay will work fine as long as it's stoneware. You can also buy big 50 pound bags of fire clay for about $9. If your clay is in earthenware, it cannot withstand the temperature and will melt. I had a bunch of leftover dry stoneware clay that was perfect for this project. To get the furnace up to temperature to melt metal, we will be using a steel pipe connected to a hair dryer. This will force air into the furnace to get the charcoal to burn really hot. Now that we have talked about the design and the materials, let's get into the actual building of the furnace. Since I am using my leftover stoneware pottery clay, it needs to be grinded. I started to break down the clay with a hammer and then used two pavers to pulverize it into a dust. I used a quarter inch mesh to filter the smaller grinded particles from the larger ones. In the end, I probably grinded about 30 to 40 pounds of clay. Once we grinded the clay, it was time to mix in the sand. I bought two 50 pound bags of all purpose sand. The ratio of clay to sand is two to one by volume. Two parts sand to one part clay. Once the sand and clay are mixed, we need to add water. Now. Don't add too much water, we just want this mixture to hold itself together without being wet. You should be able to squish the clay in your hand and have it break apart cleanly. This is the consistency you want. I did all my mixing in an old kiddie pool. It worked perfect for this job. After mixing all the refractory, I put it in a giant contractor bag and left it out for a day for the water to fully incorporate into the clay. In the end, you should have about 140 to 150 pounds of this refractory material. While we wait for the refractory to do its thing, I started to work on the molds for our refractory. But before starting, I made some measurements of the trash can. I placed a few bricks on the bottom of the trash can to raise it higher off the ground. The bottom diameter where I placed the bricks is about 18 inches. 
The top diameter of the trash can is 20.5 inches. I decided to make the lining 19 inches tall so that I could use the furnace for other things than just melting metals. I used quarter inch hardware cloth for the forms. Hardware cloth is really quite cheap and I had a lot left over from other projects. The idea for the mold is to make two concentric shells which will hold the refractory in between them. I made my shells with the taper to try to match the taper of the trash can. But that ended up being a bad idea, and if I were to do it again, I would have made them straight. The thickness of the lining that I went with was about 1.5 inches. 1.5 inches just seemed reasonable because I did not want the furnace to weigh a thousand pounds. For the insulation, I wanted to have about 2 inches of vermiculite surrounding the trash can for maximum insulation. Since I was going for 2 inches of insulation, the outer bottom diameter of the lining needed to be 14 inches. Since I decided to go for taper, I made the top outer diameter 16 inches. After I got all the dimensions calculated, I started to cut the mesh. I used an old pair of dull scissors that I had laying around to cut the mesh and it worked out nice. As I was cutting the mesh, I didn't wear any gloves and I got cut a bit, so I would recommend wearing gloves for this part. I cut out the inner mesh, the outer mesh, and a 16 inch circle for the bottom of the mesh. I attached all these pieces together using some steel wire. After attaching the pieces of mesh together, we should have something like this. I made 1.5 inch clips to hold the inner mesh to the outer mesh from some steel wire. To make the lid, I cut a 16 inch in diameter circle for the base. Since I did not want the lid to be heavy, I made a rough estimate for the height of 2 inches and found it should weigh about 21 pounds. That seemed like an okay weight so I proceeded to cut out the sides. I cut the two rectangles for the inside and outside wall. These strips will make the walls of the lid. I then attached the two strips to the circle of steel wire. I added 8 rays connecting the two walls as rebar to increase strength of the lid, as it will be moved quite often. And for the handles, I just used a couple of U-bolts. Now that we made the frame for the lid and the lining, it's time to stuff them with the refractory material. I first started with the lid to get a feel for the process. I started to add the refractory to the lid and compact it as much as I could. It's really important to try to get it as compressed as possible. As I compressed the material, I made sure the handles were placed in the correct spot because after the refractory dries, it's almost impossible to drill into it as it cracks. When the lid was about half full of material, I placed two concentric circles to help increase the strength of the lid. After compacting the material, I smoothed out the top and let it dry in a shady, cool place. Stuffing the lining was a very similar process. I started with the bottom first. I made the bottom of the lining about 2 inches thick. Once I thought the bottom was good, I moved on to the sides. To do the sides, I placed a large plastic container in the center to help keep the shape of the lining as I added the material. The container was not quite big enough, so I had to add some sand around the edges and it worked out nice. Once we finished adding all the refractory, it was time to clean up the top and add in the hole. To clean up the top, I just cut the mesh every few inches and bent it down. I used a few U-shaped pieces of steel wire to hold it in place. Now for the hole, it is best to make it now when the refractory is still wet. 
I measured the correct height about a quarter inch off the base of the furnace and cut the mesh. I used the air pipe to cut the hole. Now, when cutting the hole, make sure to do it in such a way that it will be lifted up at an angle and such that the air will circulate in the furnace in a circle. The reason for making the hole at an angle so that if the crucible breaks, the molten metal will stay inside the furnace and not leak down the pipe. Now that we have finished the lid and the lining, it's time to let it dry slowly. I let mine dry slightly covered for about three weeks in a cool shady place. After two weeks, I came back to it and lit a small fire inside to make sure it was dry. I let the fire burn for about eight to nine hours. Now since we are using vermiculite as the insulation, we don't want to leak out of the hole. So I added a steel can over the hole of the furnace to block the vermiculite from escaping the furnace. I cut strips into the can to try to match the curvature of the lining. Then I used a bit of steel wire to attach it to the furnace. Once that was complete, it was time to place the lining into the trash can. I prepared the trash can by adding four bricks in the shape of a square to the bottom. I filled the gaps with a bit of the vermiculite insulation. Now, the lining is heavy, so I had to figure out a way to add it to the trash can. I decided to wrap string around it and use two 2x4s to lift it into the can. The lining is heavy, so I had some help to carefully lift it and place it into the can. Once it was in the can, I moved it into the center and marked around the tin can with a sharpie for the hole. We then had to remove the lining from the can to make the hole. To make the hole into the can, I just drilled a few holes around the markings and used a pair of tin snips to cut away the can. Once the hole was made, it was time to place the lining into the can once and for all. I decided to duct tape the end of the tin can to the trash can as it's easy and should not get hot. Once all that was done, it was finally time to add the remaining insulation. When adding in the rest, make sure to compact it as best as you can to fill in all the empty space. Once we finished that, the furnace was complete. Now that it was complete, I did its first burn. I just added some scrap wood and slowly increased the temperature to help dry out and to start the curing process of the furnace. Now, since we use clay, it will need to take some time to fully turn into ceramic, but with each firing, it should get stronger and stronger. The insulation in the furnace so far seems to be working very well. Right now it is about 2000 degrees inside the furnace and I am able to touch the body of the furnace with no problem. It barely even feels warm. It's mind blowing that there's only 4 inches of material keeping my hands safe from the intense heat of the furnace. I am really surprised how well it worked. Now I made the height of the furnace just tall enough to allow the original steel lid of the trash can to still go on. But don't put it back on right away after your melt as the lid will conduct the heat to the body and superheat it. Place the original steel lid back on after it has cooled down for about a day. Oh, and one last thing. I want to talk about fuel, more specifically charcoal. Since I believe most of you will be using charcoal as your first fuel, I wanted to discuss it. When you go online and search which charcoal is best, people will most likely tell you lump is the best to use. And it's true. Lump charcoal burns much hotter than briquettes. But there is a problem. Lump charcoal is much more expensive than briquettes. So I was like, why not use both? Lump and briquettes. I used the briquettes to get the fire initially started, like to 1200 to 1300, and then add the lump to get to my target temperature. That way you save money on your lump charcoal by not having to use it in the initial heating. And there you go. 
a super easy furnace for your metal melting adventure. But, guys, what are you doing in here? You almost got melted. Come here. Well, wasn't that a blast? If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to continue seeing the journey of building our very own backyard foundry, give this video a like, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video.